Hello and welcome to a new video for Age of Empires 2 Defender Edition. This is a build order guide for 28 plus 2 double castle iron buy. 28 plus 2 seems quite low on villagers, you'll usually see people do 30 plus 2, 32 plus 2 maybe. And these are quite late builds, you could definitely get away with less. And that's entirely what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to show you how it can be done. You will build two castles with five villagers in each. And you won't idle anything. The on-screen time now is when the build actually starts, so if you want to skip ahead to the action and skip the intro. But if you still have any questions, come back and read this portion of the video first, listen to it rather. And also in the description I will put some FAQs as they come. So for you that are sticking around, what we're going to be doing is a pretty simple build. It only involves one advanced technique as I would call it. For example, struggling 10 gold and selling 100 stone is an advanced technique. It's not one we're using today. The one we're using today is just to give another example, is the mill before lumber camp. This is something that's quite easy to get used to and I recommend you start using it in some of your faster builds if you want to really stress some of the uh, builds you do in arena. So I wouldn't really recommend this for that low level players though you can execute it if you just know the build order. I'm also going to cover the castle age build order, I'm not going to go too in depth into it, I'm not going to take it to imp as I usually would. But I will go over the first few villagers that actually matter and where they need to go and how you're going to handle them. On screen now is Guan Franco's table based version of this build. And that's quite good. I would recommend it. And I would also recommend going to his desk, uh, Discord and checking it out. That will be linked in the description. I will also put the full, and I mean full including quite lengthy Castle Age guide, the text based version in the description. That way, if you need to come back to this video in the future, simply just load up the description when you're just getting into a game you need to quickly read up on it. So without further ado let's jump straight into this game. So we're doing our usual stuff. Start by queuing up our villagers and building two houses. Two villas on one, one on the other. As you notice I'm also playing this on Unexplored. I wouldn't recommend you do. But for a bit of practice it really helps to do this. The reason I'm doing it is because I find it a little bit easier to explain when it's unexplored. When I'm concentrating a bit more on scouting, I tend to not have as much time to explain things. So we're going for our usual 6 on cheap start. And we're going to pretend that we still need to scout a bit. In a normal game you wouldn't be fully scouted this fast, usually. So we're going to just leave our scout here. We're going to pretend he's still scouting for a little while. You'd also use this as an opportunity to scout how close you are to your enemy. Obviously if it wasn't explored then it would be require some actual scouting. Six on a sheep, one to straggler. Well to be more specific, build a house then go to straggler. The way I put this in the build is simply because you often forget to build this house or you don't have a villager on hand to build it with. So just building the house and then going to the straggler is quite important. Don't forget to keep using shift Q to keep your villagers constantly going from one sheep directly to the next. From one task to the next as well. So we're going to put our four on berries as if we've already lured in our boar. If you have two on one side of the berries, again, I was going to make an efficiency video about this, I still might. About various efficiency tips. But when you got two on one side, shift Q them to go through the berries in one order. And shift Q the other two on the other side to reverse order. And that way you will always keep two villagers on each side. Which will stop them bumping into each other. And also, if you shift Q them, they just seem to do the task a bit easier. So now we want to go grab a boar. We're going to grab this one, it's a little bit further. We still have a full sheep here to take. So this is going to be 7 on food now, plus 4 on berries. Food on our TC. We got 7. And now we want to add 2 more to stragglers. Should have 3 sheep remaining from our standard 8. If the boar is here a little bit early, then just take that villager off. Again, to go onto that cheap. Oops. There we go. So we got our three on stragglers now. Still seven on foot. 
Now we want to send a villager to go build two houses. These can be built anywhere. I'm going to build them as a little bit of a wall. We're going to start thinking about our castle placements. We have stone here and main gold here. Perhaps if we wall this off a little bit. Castle here and castle here. And we're pretty impenetrable. So after this villager goes to build two houses, the next one builds the lumber camp. We're now going to want six villagers on food, uh, on wood. There was no need to force drop that, I'm not sure why I did. And send these villagers over when they've got enough wood to build a lumber camp. And the next villager will then go. You'll be at 18 population when you're ready for putting villagers back on food again. So now we've got six, we do two more to food under TC. I'm gonna grab the vill with this boar. Sorry, the boar with this vill. Uh, not sure where that villager is going to be honest. There he is. And the next one will also go to food under TC. Right? How do you lose aggro that fast? Uh, I'll never understand this game. So at 20 population, we should have nine on food under TC. We then go to send villagers to take stone. Make sure these villagers are working efficiently. You do have six on one lumber camp and that can get quite cramped. So when this boar starts to run out, that's when we want to start pushing in some deer. We want as little dead animals as possible, if we can avoid it. So we're doing this with eight sheep and only three deer. Obviously I don't like to do my builds of four because often you don't start with four deer. So we want to make sure you can do this in all situations. It's going to be a little bit early but I'm just going to show you even with a little bit of inefficiency you can make it work. So as I said 28 plus 2, the last 2 is going to be on gold. So we're going to have 6 on stone and dark age. Well, we're going to move a couple over. You'll see what we do when it comes to it. Make sure we're not over queuing villagers. So why do we go for the mill first? Simple as, you get a lot more food this way. You're trading wood for food, but... If you have zero food, and you're clicking up to castle age, uh, sorry, zero wood, and you're going up to castle age, uh, feudal age with six on wood, you will have enough wood to get your upbuildings. So when you start adding in the gold, this is a good time to add farms. You could add them even a little bit later. And as soon as you click up, what you need to do is send two more villagers to stone. We're going to have eight on stone. This gives us 500 TC and two sheep left. So this is quite a simple build. What you can do again if you do have more food, for example four deer or you have cows or something extra that just gives you that little bit more food. What you could do is just delay the farms completely until late feudal age you click up the castle age. And build a second mining camp here, for example, where this house would be. The reason we do this is because with a lot of villagers it gets quite inefficient. And we're going to be adding even two more in feudal age. If we do add these farms and we don't have the wood after that point, what we could still do is just add another one when it comes to feudal age. Just make sure everything's working quite efficiently. These guys will expire very soon after clicking up the castle age. These two will remain farmers and these five, they are going to go to gold. We're going to have very little farmers on the way up, but when we actually get there, I'm just going to build here to the TC. But you find on the uh, when we are up to Castle H we'll, we'll get ourselves enough. And you see by our resources are looking quite healthy, we're going to be there in time. These two go to stone. Again we can build a mining camp if we want. I think it's smart to build a mining camp so let's build it now. It can be considered a little bit of a waste. But. These villagers build the blacksmith and market. They came from under TC, those five villagers were going to send gold, so we're going to make sure they go there. 
then the market spilt, we can click up. Oops. Make sure everyone's pathing in the right place. And this will definitely give us enough stone. Just because this is getting a little bit crowded, again I'm going to move her over here. So now everything's looking quite good. These guys have just finished the berries, we're going to send them to build a lumber camp. I'm going to send them over here, it is close to this one, but that's fair enough. We want to build a house and get a horse collar. And when we're able to afford it, buying 100 food is generally an okay idea. You don't necessarily need to buy 100 food. But the reason we do is because it could help you if you're in a low food situation at the same time as it just accelerates you getting the archer armor, padded archer armor. And that's quite important to get for Iron Buying Castle Age. It's extremely important for going onto our TCs even. So our economy is looking pretty good. We built the house, so we have 35 popcats, so we're not going to get popcat immediately. We're going to start selecting our villagers here just to group them up a little bit. Just so we could like grab these ones, bring them over here, grab these ones quickly. We're only 100 stone away. So effectively all these just need to collect once and then drop off. Because I'm building a castle over here, I'm going to move these villagers a little bit early. We'll still have the stone, as you can see. So as I said, I want to build it here and here. Oh, straggler in the way, that can't be bothered removing. So now any villager we create, they need to make a farm immediately. As you can see though, we're protected because they're in the castle range wherever they are, if they do break in with anything. Five villagers, they will go to your second gold to build another mining camp to start taking that. And the other five, they will go to a lumber camp. This is just a quick and easy way of spreading your villagers. The way I used to do it is I used to have like some of my villagers go to farms, but I found if you buy the food, if you need it, if you don't start with, for example, four deer. It just makes it a hell of a lot easier. Just simply grab these five, put them somewhere, grab these five, put them somewhere, rather than dividing them up. We're looking for six farmers now. So the first four villagers that are produced, six farmers. When the castles are up, queue up Ironby. We have our farmers. Now what we need is gold miners. We want 14 on gold. We have seven here, five here, so two more for 14. These can go in either gold, whichever is more efficient. It's quite efficient to put them on this gold, I feel. It's 18 minutes and we already have Iron Buy on the go. So when you have Iron Buy like these, you start thinking about sending them. We got our 17, uh, sorry, 14 on gold, and then start sending to wood. Also get uh, auto reseed on. When you have four, and almost built the fifth and sixth, like this, this is usually when I send them forward. This is enough to start breaking in a gate at an early enough time, and the rate at which you add them behind, it's quite exceptional. So what we're looking for is 17 on wood, so an extra uh, two, sorry, after we got the 14 on gold. So now we have enough wood to keep producing iron by, we have enough food to keep things running for a little while. So, what are we doing at this point aside from breaking in? Well, we're just adding some more farms. We want to add just a little bit more. Two or three more, and this is going to help us get our archer armor. You can even buy it if you feel you need it. Have an extra villager on gold if you uh, don't feel you're going to be managing your economy too amazingly. But, yeah, it's quite a simple build at this point. Just be careful not to overbuild the farms. And remember, at some point, you're going to need some houses. So we're going to build one now, just to make sure. As I said, really nice, really simple build. When we add farmers like this, we have nine now. We want to send back the wood. And this is where we're going to start banking our wood in order to get our upgrades for, for example, a barracks and a stable to get... Uh, husbandry, which is lesser important. It could be quite important if they're making cavars to try and counter you. But um, bloodlines is probably the primary, primary upgrade there. 
when you have about 17, 17 when you have the armor upgrade, it's fine to idle your TC a little bit if you're going to get the armor upgrade by the way. But when you have 17, you are more than enough to tank a TC. <laughs> because what you're really looking at is how many iron by do you need before you lose an acceptable amount. You're going to lose some trying to tank a TC, but if you have 17 with the armor upgrade, you're going to lose so few that you're not going to be mad about it. It's going to be quite a very worthwhile trade no matter how you look at it. So just to showcase a little bit of the power, I'm going to splice in some clips of using Iron Buy in ranked games, and also some unranked Arena TG because that's where it's it's quite fun. Just don't forget, gotta keep building those houses. Make sure you're safe at home, by the way. I have seen, I've literally been siege tower crossbowed before, <laughs> and uh, it was quite difficult to recover. But these are Iron Buy. You're going to recover at some point. But look at the speed TCs go down and look at how little damage they actually take. Granted they don't have fletching. I'd also want to add as a tip that a lot of people seem to forget. That your TC's damage benefits from fletching. And that's quite good to prevent raiding like that. Especially against knights. So always keep your eye out for things like that. That's a top tip I would recommend. But looking at this point we have 28, uh, 27 iron by. And there's no real stop in this, we did lose a couple already. But that's fine, they've lost TCs and lots of villagers. And for example, if they did get this castle up, we could just move and break in, uh, break in over here. A castle only really works if it covers their entire map. And if you're playing a team game, which is where you see this most, then you'll realise that you can just go to another player. So at this point, We've gone a few villagers overboard on the wood, we're about to queue up the next iron buy and also get our stable. Then we get husbandry, bloodlines, we're going to have no problem. As you see with the villagers we got queued up, we can just cancel a couple of those we've been over queuing to have the food to get those upgrades. So what do we really need to do after we get the barracks and stable up and get those upgrades? Well that is entirely up to you. A couple of upgrades I would recommend is to get wheelbarrow and gold mining. You're going to be adding a couple more farms, you're going to be at 13, 14, you're going to have a lot of villagers on the field anyway. So having wheelbarrow is a really nice upgrade to have at that point. I would also recommend getting the gold mining upgrade, maybe even adding an extra villager to gold. This will get you more gold to do whatever you want to do. Especially imping is a key thing. Working your way to imp for this build is very difficult, it's hard to reassociate your economy. It's kind of all over the place and also uh, pretty one TC. But obviously, you could add TCs after you get wheelbarrow. And if all fails, then even with this build, even if you fail to kill the other person, they're going to be so badly wounded, you're probably going to be still okay for economy, even though you've just been one TC. So that's just kind of all little nuances I would like to talk about with this build. Nice and simple build, as I said. I find the best way is the text version I put in the description. I spent quite a lot of time to make it as clear as possible what you have to do. And this is just a demonstration so that you can just read the text-based version, don't understand something, watch me do it, and you should be okay. Key things though, efficiency. I would replace this lumber camp soon. But go, uh, stone miner efficiency is also extremely important. You won't have enough stone if you don't move those two villagers over to stone at the end of Dark Age, as soon as you click on the Feudal. So that's a key thing you might forget, as well as building the house with the first villager going to Stragglers. I also, probably the number one thing I forget is building the house on the way up to Castle Age. You're 30 pop out of 30, and you tend to end up housed there, but that's just me. It's one of the things I forget. So I have some more builds that are kind of similar coming up, and a few other things to make videos about. but. This is all for now. If you have any questions, ask in the comments. I will answer them to the best of my ability. I hope you enjoyed this guide. If you have any thoughts, for example, I've upgraded to 1440p. 144Hz as well for my own enjoyment, but I'm not recording at that. And if this is too zoomed out, just let me know. I can easily just zoom in a little bit and make it a little bit easier for you to see what's going on. But I find I tend to move the camera quite a lot and being zoomed out actually prevents me from doing that. So. Thanks for watching this guide. Have a good one.